Welcome to another engineering economics video. We're going to look at chapter 8 in this video, which is about uh, benefit cost analysis. So benefit cost analysis is um, yet another way to compare projects or evaluate projects to determine if they are something that we uh, want to do, something we want to invest our money in, or perhaps invest in something else. So the different methods of um, project screening we've looked at include present worth analysis, annual equivalence analysis, rate of return analysis, and now we're going to look at benefit cost ratio or benefit cost analysis. So basically what we want to do when using benefit cost uh, analysis is to look at a potential project and look at all the pros and cons, all the things that are good about the project, which of course um, profits are, are good, revenue is good, savings is good, um, and there are other types of benefits as well. Um, to include those in our analysis, we need to try to assign some type of dollar amount to them but there are other things um, like helping the community um, or you know, in the, in the case of making a purchase, like maybe like buying a new car, there's like the cool factor. You want to have a cool car versus a, an old jalopy. So, um, so there are lots of different benefits and then there are costs or disbenefits. Um, so having to spend money on operating costs is, um, obviously a cost and a bad thing, or um, potentially doing something harmful to the community or the environment or um, some other type of non-monetary cost um, that in order to include in our analysis, we would have to try to assign some sort of dollar figure to. So the basic framework of this type of analysis is to first of all identify all of the benefits and what we call disbenefits, which kind of sounds a little funny. Um, you may have not even known it was a word, but uh, apparently it is. And it is essentially just what it sounds like. It's basically the opposite of a benefit. It's something that is bad, um, some sort of negative consequence of uh, going forward with the project. And we are going to just basically boil everything down to dollars and cents. So um, there may be some benefits that are um, a little less tangible, that it might be kind of hard to assign a dollar amount to. Um, but we're going to do our best. Uh, and uh, oftentimes, uh, some of those types of benefits that are kind of hard to assign a dollar amount to the problem statement uh, for the, the problems that we look at, the little scenarios that we investigate, will assign some sort of dollar amount for us. Um, of course, in the real world, um, if you're an engineer studying a, a potential project, um, that responsibility would fall to you to try to uh, quantify the benefits and disbenefits in dollar amounts. So um, you want to then find uh, the equivalent value of all the benefits and costs at some base period. Again, going back to the concepts we've talked about earlier in the semester, you can't compare two different things at two different points in time. You can't compare having $100 today versus having $100 five years into the future. We have to be at the same point in the timeline. We have to compare them um, from some mutually shared point in time. And the simplest way to do that is to bring everything back to present day, uh, assuming that we are investigating a potential project that may occur in the future, and we can forecast what all the costs and benefits will be um, throughout the life of the project. If we back calculate or discount all those values back to present day, in other words, use a present value function, um, then we can add them all up and compare them. And so essentially, a benefit-cost ratio analysis 
uh, just simply uh, is you compare all the benefits to all the costs. If the benefits exceed the costs, so if you set it up as a ratio, benefits divided by cost, and that ratio is greater than one, then it's a good thing. Then the benefits outweigh the costs, and that means it's a project that we would want to undertake. If the benefit divided by cost ratio is less than one, that means the project is going to cost us more than it is going to benefit us. So we would not want to undertake that project. When the textbook talks about disbenefits, um, I believe an example they use talks about building a new highway. And that reminds me of the first Disney or Pixar Cars movie. Um, the town of Radiator Springs um, was a small town on Route 66 in the western U.S. And when the highway system, when the interstate system was built, the, the town was bypassed. And so there are both benefits and disbenefits to building that interstate highway. So building a new highway may create new businesses along the new interstate. It may, um, things like gas stations, restaurants, hotels. Um, it's going to um, make transportation easier. Uh, which might then improve the overall economy, reduce shipping costs, maybe uh, improve uh, gas mileage, um, things like that. So there are lots of potential benefits to building a new highway. But if, if you're living in that town of Radiator Springs the, and you used to have a bunch of traffic coming through your town, now none of that traffic is going to come visit you because it's all on the interstate. And so uh, the old roads, the old businesses, uh, they may lose their customers and go out of business. So that would be a disbenefit. So there are often unintended consequences um, to a project. So when analyzing a project, we need to try to consider all of those effects, both good and bad. Okay, let's start putting this stuff into numbers. Let's start quantifying and looking at formulas. So the basic idea of a uh, benefit-cost ratio is just simply taking benefits and dividing it by the cost. And as I said, if the uh, benefit is greater than the cost, then this ratio will be greater than 1, and that means it's a good thing. If the cost is bigger, then this ratio will be less than 1, and that's a bad thing. Now, with costs, we can break that down. So we have just a regular C to, to mean costs in general. But we can specifically look at the investment cost, I. So for a project, what is the upfront um, investment, the capital that we have to spend to get this project up and running? And then we have C prime um, that represents the annual operating cost. So we can break that down uh, into the, the two components of the overall cost. When we combine them, the investment plus an, annual operating costs, we just get C, the total cost. A couple other variables we're going to use here is K, the periods requiring investment. So oftentimes that's just one. Um, we spend all the money up front in year zero to get the project started and then it's up and running and we start uh, making revenue. But there are times where it may take multiple years. If you're building a big new factory, for example, um, or a highway system, like in the previous uh, example, that might take multiple years of building or investing before the project is ready to start operating. So in that case, K might be more than one, it might be two, three, or, or more. N is the project life, so uh, however long we anticipate the project to last is going to be our capital N. Here is an example where we have um, N representing number of years. We have the benefit in each year, B sub N. Um, so we've got the benefits in year zero is zero, and the benefits in year one is also zero. So 
this particular project, it took two years of investment before it actually started operating. So in those first two years, we, we, got, we received zero benefit and we were investing. We were spending 10 and uh, I don't know, maybe this chart is representing millions of dollars. Maybe it was $10 million uh, in year zero and 10 million again in year one in order to uh, initiate the project. Then, we'll kind of cut that off right there. So then after that end of that year one, then the project actually started generating some benefits, some revenue or savings or something along those lines. So we started seeing 20, 30, 30, 20. So it, it's not a consistent amount, but they are positive amounts. And then there must be some type of um, annual operating expense to this project as well. It takes us five and five and then eight and eight. Uh, so they, there are ongoing costs associated with the project as well. So we are going to consider investing in this project. Uh, and so, so this is a five-year project. Uh, we can see what the benefits are over that five-year term, what the costs are over that five-year term as well. Now we're going to use a 10% interest rate. Um, and we're going to use that rate uh, because we need to calculate the present values of all of these costs. So the benefits, we don't start seeing until we're several years into the future of this project. And um, you know the costs as well, they span the whole life of the project. And to make a comparison of benefits and costs, we need to compare them at the same point in time. So we're going to need to take all of these values and find the present value of each of them and add them all up. And then we can do our benefit cost analysis. So we can see we have an interest rate of 10%. N is 5. That's the lifespan of the project, 5 years. And uh, K is 1. It's not until we get to the end of year one that we start actually experiencing some benefits. So we want to know what is the uh, total benefit, what is the total cost. We can break that down into the initial investment and the um, annual uh, operating costs. And then what is the benefit cost ratio using a 10% rate? Here's a screen capture of a spreadsheet I made earlier showing uh, the solution of this problem. But I'm going to pull up Excel and um, show you how I came up with these values, how to get this result. Uh, but I think I'm going to need to do that in the next video. It looks like I'm getting close to my 15 minute limit. So I'm going to stop right here. And in the next video, I'll show you how to calculate these values.